today's speaker, ah, Dr. Stephen Cameron from Pakistan, our Vice President of YYCI Pakistan. It has been a long journey with us since the beginning of this month. That's the first of May to today. He's been there every day, teaching, listening, learning, empowering. Uh, what can I say? From the depth of my heart, I, I really appreciate Dr. Stephen Cameron. And now he's come back again and he's coming back this evening to come and round up the whole thing that we've been talking about since the beginning of this month and talk about overcoming crisis, challenges, conflicts, critics, overcoming financial challenges. I know we just want to round up, we want to package this, this program that we've started for a month, we just want to complete and conclude it in a very perfect way. And the only person that can do it for us is Dr. Stephen Cameron. So who is Dr. Stephen Cameron? He's a member of Chambers of Commerce, he's a member of Homopathic Medical Council of Pakistan, and also has doctor of homeopathic medicine. Is the diploma? He has a diploma in Christian ministry, diploma in Bible studies, and Raymond Bible College. He's the senior manager of banking professionals, and also deliver lectures in WMCB Bank Staff College for the following. He also has a lot of degrees and also hard to serve the great leaders in the society. And now he works almost 12 years in the bank, MCB Bank Limited, and also been promoted several times. And now he's with us here at Yes You Can International, Yes You Can International Academy, to deliver this important topic to us. He has master's in business administration, executive majors, marketing, finance for Lago. He also another leader we cannot do away with. He's full of wisdom, full of knowledge, full of experience. And permit me to also say, is the proud son of Dr. Samina Evelyn from Pakistan. So join me now and let us relax for the last time here in May 2024 to listen to our great leader in our midst, Dr. Stephen Cameron. Thank you so much, a very dear Professor Dr. Queen Elizabeth Lucas, for your mentorship, for your guidance, for your leadership. And I'm really thankful for this opportunity. And, and I'm really thankful to uh, Lukman Nuruddin. Uh, he's, he's, also, uh, he's also amazing. And he's supporting you in this journey. And all the dignitaries who are here, all the great leaders, all the great learners who are here with us. And the topic for today is very important. Uh, as we're going to learn that how we are going to overcome crisis, overcome challenges, overcome conflicts, overcome critics, overcome the financial challenges. I would say that, you know, it's a topic on five C's. And C, first C is for crisis. Second C is for challenges. Third C is for conflicts. Four C is for critics. And fifth C is for cash challenges. Those are the financial challenges. And we are going to learn that how we would navigate uh, and overcome various challenges. Um, and we would also learn that what are the strategies through which we could actually overcome these challenges. So the part one today is crisis. 
So as we all know that there's a great uncertainty and turmoil across the globe and the world is facing crisis that has shaken the foundation and existence also. Uh, in these time of adversity, the true spirit of humanity is tested and it is our responsibility also to overcome these challenges. The first step in overcoming crisis is acknowledgement. We must acknowledge the gravity of the situation we face, the impact it has on our lives. And denial not only prolongs the suffering, but it also delays the inevitable, right? So once we acknowledge the crisis, we must come together as a community, as a nation, as a global society. Unity is a strength, right? Unity is a greatest strength in the time of adversities. So I think we should together, you know, work for a common purpose for well-being and prosperity of all. The other important point uh, which we should know is resilience. Re resilience is not about avoiding hardships or escaping it, but it's all about bouncing back from adversity, learning from our experiences and adapting to new realities. We must cultivate resilience within ourselves, within our communities, drawing strength from our shared values, traditions, and aspirations. Adaptability is another essential trait in overcoming crisis. The world is constantly changing and we should also know that flexibility leads us towards creativity, innovation, and it also helps us in navigating uncertain trains and finding new paths forward. Communication is also very important. Communication is a key in times of crisis. We must maintain open, honest, and transparent communication by sharing accurate information, listening to the concern of others and offering support and reassurance, we can foster a sense of solidarity and purpose. Another very important strategy during the times of crisis is empathy. Empathy is uh, a cornerstone of our humanity. In times of crisis, we must not lose sight of our shared humanity, right? Empathy builds bridges and understanding and fosters a sense of connection that transcends borders and boundaries. Leadership is also very crucial in times of crisis. Leaders must rise to the occasion, inspiring confidence, providing guidance and support. True leaders lead by example, demonstrating integrity, humility, and compassion in words and actions also. Finally, as Dr. Sabina has told us, that hope is our beacon in darkness. In the darkest times, hope is what sustains us, what drives us forward, and what reminds us that better tomorrow is possible. Hope fuels our resilience, ignites our creativity. Hope fuels our determination to overcome even the greatest of challenges. So in a nutshell, we can say that overcoming crisis requires courage, resilience, unity, and hope. Now, let's move on towards the second part that is overcoming challenges, right? It's the second C. Embracing challenges and the path towards personal growth as well. So, we all know that life is not a smooth journey. It's not at all a straight path. It's a road that is not straight. So, it is filled with obstacles, twists, turns. So yet, it is precisely, it is precisely obvious that overcoming these challenges, we have to find meaning, growth, and fulfillment. So one of the most profound lessons we can learn from overcoming challenges is resilience, right? Like we have learned also for crisis. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from adversity. It is not only, it doesn't mean that, you know, uh, we are facing storms and rough waters that we learn to navigate the seas of life with confidence and competence. Moreover, overcoming challenges fosters adaptability. In today's fast paced and ever changing world, adaptability is the key. So, challenges force us out 
of our comfort zone and compel us to develop new skills, perspective, ways of thinking, all of which are essential for adaptation and growth. Furthermore, for overcoming challenges, uh, our character is being built. It is often said that adversity reveals our true selves, our strengths, our weaknesses, our values, and our priorities also. They teach us the importance of courage, humility, compassion in overcoming challenges. We not only become better individuals, but also better members of our communities and societies. So, uh, challenges and overcoming challenges requires determination, discipline, dedication also. Uh, we also require the support of friends, family members, mentors who believe in us and encourage us to keep us going. Right mindset is also very important to overcome challenges. And a growth mindset is also helpful. You know, it helps us in self-discovery also. We should embrace them and embrace the challenges with sense of curiosity, openness, optimism. We should view these challenges not as barriers, but stepping stones on the path towards success and fulfillment. As we know that Tom and Edison famously said, I have not failed, right? I have just found 10,000 ways that won't work out. Failure is not the end of the road, but rather a helpful stepping stone towards journey of success. To sum up, we can say that challenges are essential part of human experience. And facing challenges is very important to learn, to grow, to become the best version of ourselves. It teaches us resilience, adaptability, and character. It empowers us to navigate the complexities of life with confidence and grace. So let's embrace challenges. Let us move on towards the third part of today's lecture, that is overcoming conflicts and embracing harmony, navigating and overcoming conflicts. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed guests and dear friends, in world today that is full of different perspectives, conflicts are inevitable. They arise from various beliefs, ideologies, interests, and ambitions. However, it is how we navigate and resolve these conflicts and define that defines our progress, right? As individuals, communities, and nations. The first step towards overcoming conflicts lies in acknowledging the conflicts, right? Understanding the root cause of the conflict as well. Conflicts rarely occur in isolation. They are often deeper underlying issues such as inequality, injustice, miscommunication also, right? We can begin with acknowledgement of these causes, right? And addressing these conflicts at the source rather than merely treating their symptoms. So moreover, overcoming conflicts require empathy, willingness to see things from different perspective, right mindset, and understanding various viewpoints with open-mindedness. Open dialogue is also very important. Genuine empathy requires, is the basic requirement, right? For understanding. So we should be empathetic in handling conflicts. Commitment for peaceful negotiation and compromises is also very important. Lack of less aggression is also very important when we are overcoming conflicts. Education also plays a crucial role in overcoming conflicts by promoting tolerance, diversity, and conflict re resolution skills. From early ages, we can equip future generations with the tools they need to navigate complexities of the diverse world. Education not only fosters understanding and empathy, but also empowers individuals to challenge, right? prejudice and discriminations and making the society a harmonious society and more inclusive fun and the best society to live in. In addition to addressing conflicts at interpersonal level, we must also confront systematic injustices, inequalities that fuel conflicts at a border scale. So therefore, 
Overcoming conflicts requires approach that addresses both symptoms and root, root causes of the conflicts. Moreover, technology has potential to be a powerful tool for conflict resolution. We should also use technology for handling or managing conflicts, right? Rather than promoting it. So ultimately, overcoming conflicts requires a collective effort grounded in shared values of peace, justice, mutual respect. It requires us to rise above our differences and work together towards a common goal of building a world where conflicts are resolved through dialogues, understanding, rather than violence and oppression. To sum up, conflicts are an inevitable part of human experience, but they need not define our future. But acknowledging the root causes of conflicts, fostering empathy, understanding, promoting peaceful negotiations, compromises, addressing symptomatic injustices, harnessing the power of education, technology, and working together towards shared goals, we can overcome conflicts. So let's move on towards the fourth C, that is critics or criticism. And that criticism could be constructive as well as biased. So let's dig deep into it and understand it further. So in life, as we journey forward, our goals and aspirations, we are bound to encounter critics, criticism along the way. These voices, whether constructive or not, can shape our path and influence our decisions. We should always see the silver lining behind criticism, as criticism is a feedback. We can get a lot of ideas and evaluations to make a better version of ourselves, right? And it also serves as a tool for growth, improvement, offering insight and suggestions for enhancement. Non-constructive criticism, uh, lack depth and substance. It aims to tear down rather than building up. So uh, we are going to actually see how we can deal with it also. Criticism, regardless of its form, carries weight. It can affect our psychology. It can affect our emotions, even you know, physicality also somehow. Non-constructive criticism can breed self-doubt, insecurity, and hinder our progress as well. So how we can navigate these challenges, these criticism, it define a future as well. So active listening is a key. Even when criticism seems unjust or unfounded, we should listen actively. Seeking feedback from multiple sources can provide us a holistic perspective, helping us to separate, you know, helping us to groom ourselves. So handling criticism is not just about mind, it's about heart, it's about building resilience, the ability to bounce back from adversity, stronger and more determined than before. Resilience is forced in the crucible of adversity. Tempered by the fires of hardship, it is the steel that strengthens our resolve and fuels our perseverance. And we must surround ourselves with supportive network, mentors, friends, loved ones, and who believe in us, who lift us up when we fall and who remind us of our inherent worth as well. So moreover, let us recognize that our worth is not upon the opinions of others. We are not defined by the words of critics, but by the strength of our character. So the depth of our convictions and the resilience of our spirits, by refusing, we reclaim our power and reaffirm our worth. So finally, let us embrace criticism, not as a burden, but as a blessing and as catalyst for growth and transformation. Let us channel the energy of our critics into fuel our journey, propelling us even or ever closer towards our goals. So overcoming critics, criticism, 
especially non-constructive and requires courage, resilience, and self-awareness. So let us move towards the fifth part and the final part also. That is the financial challenges or the cash challenges, right? Uh, we all know that it is very important to know how we are going to navigate these challenges. And for this, financial education is very important. We should invest in financial education to understand basic principles of money management, budgeting, savings, and investment. And we, we can take advantage of the free resources. We can take help of books, podcasts, online courses to increase our financial literacy as well. And this would empower our decision making, improve financial habits, and long-term wealth accumulation. Budgeting and savings is also very, very important. We should create a budget to track expenses, prioritize spending, and set aside savings for future goals and emergencies also. You, we can use this budget. We can, we can use budgeting tools as well. Uh, apps to monitor our spendings, automate savings contributions, and avoid unnecessary expenses also. And the impact of it would be enhanced financial stability. And that is what we require for our future. Reduce debt and increased progress towards our financial goals. Debt management is also very important. We should minimize and even you know, bring our debt to zero, right? Responsibly to avoid, and we have to avoid high interest payments also, and this would maintain our financial stability, right? And for this, the strategy is prioritize high, that avoid high interest debts, negotiate low interest rates, and explore debt consolidation options to streamline payments. And try to purchase things on cash so that our debt would be on zero. And the impact of it would be reduce financial stress, improve credit scores, and increased ability to build wealth and savings. And we all know that we, we are going to build, build, build wealth if we don't have a debt on us. Investing for growth is very important. Invest in assets such as stocks, bonds, and real estates that grow also. So it's also very important. We should educate ourselves on investment options, assess risk tolerance, and emergency fund is also very important here. Establish an emergency fund to cover unexpected expenses, financial emergencies, such as medical bills, et cetera, and joblessness also, definitely. Sometimes we lose job also. And strategy for it is, Set a savings goal, automate contributions, and avoid tapping into fund, right? And definitely saving for the genuine emergencies as well. Long-term financial planning is also very important. We should develop a comprehensive financial plan that aligns with our goal, values, and life stages, considering factors such as retirement, education, and state planning. And what we are going to do uh, as a strategy for it is, we should make a specific financial goal, review it, adjust the plan regularly, and seek professional help if required. So by integrating these financial practices, we can build a solid foundation for our long-term wealth. So to conclude this up, I would say that the journey towards overcoming crisis, challenges, conflicts, critics, and financial challenging is one marked by resilience, perseverance, and collective action. Firstly, in addressing crisis, whether they by economic downturns, natural disaster, or global pandemics, proactive measures such as effective crisis management is very important. By learning from past experience, implementing strategies that mitigate risk and resilience is very, very important. And overcoming challenges requires approach that addresses the root cause of adversity. And we should all learn to overcome challenge. We've also seen that how we are going to handle conflicts, right? We've also seen that how we are going to manage 
the critics or criticism. And lastly, we've seen that how we are going to manage over manage the financial challenges. In conclusion, the path to overcoming crisis, challenges and conflict, criticism and financial challenges is not easy, but it is necessary to manage it. It requires courage, determination and willingness to embrace change and innovation by working hard together, harnessing our collective strengths and straying true to our values, we can overcome adversity and build a bright future for ourselves and our generation. And as the slogan of our organization says, yes, we can do it. Yes, we can overcome challenges. Yes, we can overcome crises. Yes, we can overcome conflicts. Yes, we can overcome critics, criticism. And yes, we can overcome the chaos challenges and all the five C's together and together. Thank you so much. <laughs> I like the way you finish it up. Yes, we can overcome yes, we can. the crisis. We can overcome the challenges. We can overcome the critics. We are okay. We can overcome the conflicts. We can overcome the crisis. Yes, yes. we can. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Stephen Cameron. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Um, and very soon. I'm going to be calling. It looks like we're going to stay in longer today. I don't know how we're yeah. going to do it because um, my mentor is in the house. One of my oh, mentors yeah. is in the house. And um, I've missed him for almost six months or four, five months or so. And I can't just let him just uh, pop in and pop out. He needs to say something to us this afternoon. But on behalf of Yes You Can International, and yes, you can International Academy. We, from the depth of my heart, we want to say thank you so much, Dr. Stephen Cameron from Pakistan. And also he will be joining us this evening as we conclude yes. our masterclass. So thank you. Thank you so much and God bless you. It's an honor.